The Vietnam War was the formative experience for a generation of CIA and military intelligence personnel involved in the Phoenix program. They viewed the military defeat in Vietnam as a betrayal on the home front, a loss of will by domestic political enemies, not a military failure against a nationalistic revolution fought as a guerrilla war. The Phoenix program, assassinating suspected VC sympathizers in a systematic manner, worked well and is the blueprint for the current black operation targeting thousands of loyal Americans using state-of-the-art microwave and radio frequency radiation weapons, the motivation to suppress domestic dissidents and to assassinate loyal American opposition stems from the perception of dissent against the war as treason. This philosophy is stated very clearly in the Mind War paper written by NSA General Michael Aquino. The Department of Defense has a huge stake in futuristic technology that kills by ionizing and non-ionizing radiation, leaving little or no trace. The indiscriminate killing of the Phoenix program continues on American soil. The terms soft kill, slow kill, and silent kill refer to the new way of killing the enemy in conflicts short of war and the small wars of the future. The counterinsurgency doctrine has now been applied to the home front so that the perceived betrayal of the military in Vietnam will not be repeated. The generation of CIA and military intelligence led by Shackley, Helms, Casey, Singlab, Secord, John B. Alexander, Michael Aquino, Paul Vallely, and others have built the perfect beast using selective assassination that leaves no trace. The ability to cull the human herd with silent kill technology allows a few personalities to remake the entire society in their own image. Extremely low frequency technology slowly drives the target crazy with silent sound similar to the CIA MK Ultra psychiatrist Ewan Cameron's psychic driving technique used to break down the target's personality. The new buzzwords at the Pentagon are synthetic telepathy and psychotronics. Another means of attack on targets is the Smirnoff patent that uses subliminal suggestion to manipulate human behavior. This patent was purchased by the remote viewing company SciTech Corporation. Emotional manipulation is accomplished using Dr. Michael Persinger's work to remotely project emotional states that the brain entrains or locks onto and emulates. One can broadcast rage or fear at an individual target to manipulate and control them. As if these methods were not enough to torture and murder people, add to this nightmarish toolbox active gang stalking. CIA created cults and other cause-oriented groups are used to induce further trauma in the target by actively harassing them in public in a neutralization technique described in counterintelligence operations manuals that are aimed at enemy agents. In the race to develop a new weapon, it has always been necessary to test it on human beings. Perfecting the latest weapons designed to kill slowly and silently as well as perfecting the process of controlling the human mind are no different. Once the weaponry has been perfected on these few thousand people, the same techniques will be applied en masse to the general population and then to humanity as a whole. MKUltra was the secret CIA crash program to develop techniques to control the human mind, with the conviction that the keys to brainwashing lay in technology. The agency's brainwashing experts gravitated to people in the mold of the brilliant and sometimes mad scientists obsessed by the wonders of the brain. In 1953, CIA officer Richard Helms chose Dr. Sidney Gottlieb to run the technical service staff. The TSS, through the Office of Research and Development, 
was given the job of developing poisons to assassinate political opponents, truth serum drugs for interrogating spies, and hypnotic techniques to create unwitting double agents, couriers, and robot assassins. Dr. Gottlieb used Nazi scientists and their state-of-the-art mind control techniques that had been perfected in concentration camps using victims of the Holocaust. General Dwight D. Eisenhower gave his personal approval to exploit the work and research of the Nazis in the death camps. The German doctors were brought to the U.S. and went to work for Project Paperclip. These men were insulated against war crimes charges. The Nuremberg prosecutors were shocked that the U.S. authorities were using German doctors despite their criminal past. Under the leadership of Dr. Strughold, 34 scientists accepted contracts from Project Paperclip and were moved to Randolph Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. These personalities began to work on human radiation studies, aviation medicine, microwave technology, and MKUltra mind control experiments. The authorization to hire these Nazi scientists came directly from the Joint Chiefs of Staff. The top military brass stated that they wished to exploit these rare mines. Operation Paperclip eventually recruited 9,000 Nazi scientists and technicians to help the U.S. destroy the USSR. Some of these scientists were known as programmers, people skilled in the art of breaking down and controlling the human mind. Dr. Joseph Mengele and others experimented extensively with children and adults using mescaline, electroshock therapy, hypnosis, sensory deprivation, torture, rape, and trauma bonding in an effort to control the human mind. Dr. Mengele was so successful using the technique of trauma bonding that survivors today still exhibit a profound affection for their torturer, referring to Mengele as Beautiful Joseph. Dr. L. Wilson Green was a Jewish doctor who the Nazis coerced to participate in their experiments at Auschwitz. This individual, whose code name was Dr. Green, came to the U.S. after World War II and began to experiment on adults and children for the military and CIA. The military and CIA copied the Nazi methodology and began numerous programs of their own. The first CIA program was known as MKUltra. The MK is an abbreviation for the German words for mind control. By 1953, the CIA, U.S. Navy, and U.S. Army Chemical Corps were conducting their own narco-hypnosis programs. To avoid confusion, the dozens of mind control operations will be referred to generically as MKUltra. According to MKUltra documents and sources, the methodology of mind control works best when severe trauma is administered by the age of three years old. Severe trauma, such as rape, applied at the age of three, will cause the personality to split or dissociate in an attempt to shield the mind from memories of events too painful to endure. The psychiatric terms are multiple personality disorder or dissociative identity disorder and can be produced accidentally or purposefully. The Three Faces of Eve is the true story of multiple personality disorder created by childhood abuse. Psychic trauma and creation of multiple personalities was eventually codified by programmers into a standard methodology and is typically accomplished by forcing children to observe and participate in the ritual sacrifice of animals and humans and inducing further psychic trauma by the means of rape and other horrors. The trauma causes the dissociation. This functions much like the partitioning of a hard drive in a computer. The dissociative state is used as an opening to hypnotically induce an alternate shell personality. The programmer will use hypnosis and triggers to call forth the created personality known as an alter personality. Only 20% of the general population is easily hypnotizable, but trauma at an early age makes people vulnerable to dissociation and thus easily hypnotizable. 
Typically, the programmer might wear a costume, such as a rabbit suit, and sacrifice a rabbit in front of the child victims before they are physically traumatized. The image of the rabbit, a phrase from Alice in Wonderland, or similar paired images are used as the triggers to call forth the alter personality. The method works best when the trauma is repeated around six years of age. A few years later, the child victim's IQ test and personality test are evaluated to determine whether the child may be trained in assassination, sexual blackmail, drug courier, or other role. The subject can be hypnotized and used for operations, but we would only be consciously aware of the sense of lost time. Dr. Sidney Gottlieb employed these early programmers and concentrated on the use of LSD for mind control and exotic poisons and drugs for political assassinations. He personally gave LSD to an unknowing fellow scientist, Dr. Frank Olson, who worked for the Army Chemical Corps Special Operations Division at Fort Detrick. His job was developing biological weapons. Dr. Olson committed suicide by jumping through the window of a 10th floor hotel. Dr. Gottlieb concealed his actions and the Olson family was unaware of the cause of his suicide until 27 years later when the facts emerged during a congressional hearing on CIA abuses. The link between Gottlieb and Olson illustrates how the different elements of biological and chemical weapons, radiation testing, and MK Ultra were all intertwined. Dr. Ewan Cameron was president of the American and Canadian Psychiatric Associations. He ran the Allen Memorial Institute, which was founded in 1943 with funds from the Rockefeller Foundation. Nazi paperclip scientists made their way into the CIA and military-sponsored mind control programs here in the United States and Canada. Some of these scientists were friends of Dr. Cameron. Money for Cameron's operation came from the CIA and was funneled through the Cornell Society for the Investigation of Human Ecology. The systematic annihilation or depatterning of a subject's mind and memory was accomplished with overdoses of LSD, barbiturate sleep for 65 days at a time, and electroshock therapy at 75 times the recommended dosage. Psychic driving, the repetition of a recorded message for 24 hours a day, programmed the emptied mind. The Canadian government settled a class action lawsuit by 250 former patients of Dr. Cameron decades later, but no person or institution has ever been disciplined or punished for these activities. Cameron was the premier psychiatrist of the 20th century. He had studied Nazi scientists at the Nuremberg trials and later replicated many of their methods and sought their assistance in the race to control the human mind. Cameron's mind control experiments were one program out of many run by the CIA, Navy, Air Force, Army, and others. Richard Helms ran the Dirty Tricks Department after the Bay of Pigs and became Director of Central Intelligence in 1966. He destroyed the archive on MKUltra when he left in 1972 and successfully covered up the crimes of MKUltra. Helms, like Gottlieb, was a Machiavellian character who used paperclip scientists and would stop at nothing to win. He advocated low-intensity warfare, transmitting strategic subliminal messages to the brains of enemy populations, and the use of high frequencies to affect memory and the unconscious mind. In 1964, he wrote a memo to the Warren Commission, where he mentions biological radio communication. Quote, Cybernetics can be used in molding of a child's character, the inculcation of knowledge and techniques, the amassing of experience, the establishment of social behavior patterns, all functions which can be summarized as control of the growth processes of the individual. In 1953, MKUltra relied on LSD, 
but by the 1960s the emphasis had changed to biological radio communication. MKUltra had 149 subprojects that encompassed nearly every aspect of human behavior and social science. In the 1977 Senate hearings, former CIA Director Admiral Stansfield Turner stated that the program took place at 80 institutions, including 44 universities, 15 private companies, 12 hospitals, and 3 prisons. MK Ultra Subproject 119 was the foundation of all non-lethal weapons programs currently active and included a summary of five areas, one of which is entitled Techniques of Activation of the Human Organism by Remote Electronic Means. This memo was dated August 17, 1960, and when viewed with other evidence that was not destroyed, shows significant interest in radio frequency weapons and direct control of human behavior at a distance. By 1960, the CIA dropped emphasis on the use of LSD in favor of electronic influence. This aspect of the research is where the greatest modern emphasis has been, rather than chemical or biological agents, both of which violate existing treaties and leave physical traces. In 1962, a CIA manual focused on radiohypnotic intracerebral control RHIC, which was developed by the Pentagon, quote, when a part of your brain receives a tiny electrical impulse from outside sources, such as vision, hearing, etc., an emotion is produced, anger at the sight of a gang of boys beating an old woman, for example. The same emotions of anger can be created by artificial radio signals sent to your brain by a controller you could instantly feel the same white-hot anger without any apparent reason." Unquote. Another term, electronic dissolution of memory, EDOM, refers to the ability to erase memory at a distance. I'm Chris Di Nicola, born July of 1962, rendering me 32 years of age. I was a subject in radiation as well as mind control and drug experiments performed by a man I knew as Dr. Green. I was a subject from 1966 to 1976. Dr. Green performed radiation experiments on me in 1970, focusing on my neck, throat, and chest. 1972 focusing on my chest and my uterus in 1975. Each time I became dizzy, nauseous, and threw up. All these experiments were performed on me in conjunction with mind control techniques and drugs in Tucson, Arizona. Dr. Green was using me mostly as a mind control subject from 1966 to 1973. His objective was to gain control of my mind and train me to be a spy assassin. I was in what looked like a laboratory and there seemed to be other children. I was strapped down, naked, spread eagle, on a table, on my back. Dr. Green had electrodes on my body, including my head. He used what looked like an overhead projector and repeatedly said he was burning different images into my brain while a red light flashed aimed at my forehead. In between each sequence, he used electric shock on my body and told me to go deeper and deeper, deeper while repeating each image would go deeper into my brain and I would do whatever he told me to do. I felt drugged because he had given me a shot before he started the procedure. When it was over, he gave me another shot. The next thing I remember, I was with my grandparents again in Tucson, Arizona. I was four years old. You can see from this experiment that Dr. Green used trauma, drugs, post-hypnotic suggestion, and more trauma in an effort to gain total control of my mind. He used me in radiation experiments both for the purposes of determining the effects of radiation on various parts of my body and to terrorize me as an additional trauma in the mind control experiments. 
The rest of the experiments took place in Tucson, Arizona, out in the desert. I was taught how to pick locks, be secretive, use my photographic memory, and a technique to withhold information by repeating numbers to myself. Dr. Green moved on to wanting me to kill dolls that look like real children. I stabbed a doll with a spear once after being severely traumatized, but the next time I refused. He used many pain induction techniques, but as I got older, I resisted more and more. And Dr. Green ruthlessly used electric shock drugs, spun me on a table, put shots in my stomach, in my back, dislocated my joints, and hypnotic techniques to make me feel crazy and suicidal. I am a victim of electromagnetic microwave frequency harassment. Uh, I am being physically tortured every day. Covert, silent, radio frequency electronic attacks being carried out in public against people in their homes across the USA. By electromagnetic harassment a sort at the end of 1996 and beginning of 1997. It felt like um, they were just like messing up um, my body and they're just it just felt like I was getting physically tortured and I couldn't I couldn't stop them. I've been targeted with electromagnetic energy on at least two occasions where I measured the power at over 100 percent of the FCC allowed limit for RF exposure using a NARDA 8718 radiation hazard meter. The trajectories we've tracked, it's been coming from the neighbors. First, you're skeptical, but we've tracked our health, the temperature in the home. We've had blank that are supposed to reflect um, microradiation and uh, radar. They're radar reflective material, and they've burned. It's just really embarrassing and humiliating, and I hate being in this position. But I have to stick it out. Hopefully, I'll be free soon. But thank you for listening. Bye. Project Pandora. In 1953, the Russians began to bombard the U.S. Embassy in Moscow with electromagnetic radiation in the microwave spectrum, but the fact was kept secret from the embassy employees. U.S. Ambassador Stossel contracted a blood disease, bleeding eyes, nausea, and eventually lymphoma. He and other employees eventually died as a result of the microwave attacks. Dr. Henry Kissinger sent a secret memo giving hazard pay to embassy personnel in the 1970s. Scientists began zapping monkeys to study the biological effects of highly concentrated microwave frequencies. Jose Delgado experimented on four human subjects using radio waves, reporting they experienced different emotions, sensations, and colored visions. Delgado stated that these weapons were, quote, more dangerous than atomic destruction. With knowledge of the brain, he said, we may transform, we may shape, direct, roboticize man. I think the great danger of the future is that we will have roboticized human beings who are not aware that they have been roboticized." Unquote. Dr. Delgado was in fact responsible for the development of a brain transponder that was used to roboticize human subjects. Women at different points around the camp appeared to experience similar symptoms at the same time even though they were not in contact with one another. Large numbers of women complained of sudden feelings of extreme tiredness shortly before major events such as the departure of a cruise missile convoy. Readings taken with a wide-range signal strength meter showed marked increases in the background signal level near one of the women's camps at the time they claimed to be experiencing ill effects, including vertigo, retinal bleeding, burnt face even at night, nausea, sleep disturbances, palpitations, loss of concentration, loss of memory, disorientation, 
severe headaches, temporary paralysis, faulty speech coordination, irritability, and a sense of panic. These effects have been reviewed by Dr. Robert Becker, twice nominated for the Nobel Prize and a specialist in electromagnetic effects. His report confirms that the symptoms mirror those he would expect to see had microwave weapons been deployed. The Department of Justice Electromagnetic Weapons Program The Department of Defense uses the Department of Justice to develop and test non-lethal weapons as an aspect of deniability because many of these applications violate existing treaties. By using the Department of Justice and classifying these programs as crowd control, they are able to avoid scrutiny and can violate the spirit of the law without technically being in violation of international treaties. In 1993, the National Institute of Justice Initiative on Less Than Lethal Weapons recommended that state and local police departments in America utilize psychotronic, electromagnetic, and other mind control weapons against American citizens involved in, quote, domestic disturbances, an open-ended term that could include family arguments. The report said, quote, short-term research will be completed to adopt a military technology to use by domestic law enforcement, including laser microwave and electromagnetic weapons, unquote. The Washington Post reported, quote, the Pentagon and the DOJ have agreed to share state-of-the-art military technology with civilian law enforcement agencies, including exotic non-lethal weapons, unquote. This new approach to law enforcement was showcased in a three-day secret conference on non-lethal weaponry at the Applied Physics Laboratory at John Hopkins University in Maryland. The conference head was Colonel John B. Alexander, Program Manager for Non-Lethal Psychotronic Defense, Los Alamos National Laboratory. Attending the meeting was Attorney General Janet Reno, military weapons specialists, and representatives from state and local police departments. I am a victim of electronic harassment. All right, my name is Katherine Moore. I am formerly of Wilmington, North Carolina. Today, I live in Miami, Florida with my daughter. I am a victim of electronic torture, surveillance, and wiretapping. I served as the mayor pro tem of that city for 14 years. During that time, I reported political corruption, police brutality, and the molestation of young children that went unpunished and unprosecuted. For these things, I became a targeted individual. I have been destroyed financially. I've lost my home. I lost my 30 year old successful business. I was at one time a college professor. I cannot find a job anywhere. So I am completely and totally financially devastated. I am not alone. I am assaulted and tortured by law enforcement from the city level to the federal level. There are so many of us who are being tortured that our federal law enforcement agencies who were charged with the duty and responsibility of protecting us from international terrorism, that that protection is inadequate to the American citizenry because the money and the man hours are being directed at domestic terrorism, at U.S. citizens. Anyone who dares to blow the whistle or who joins a peace march or has the audacity to tackle a major U.S. corporation becomes a targeted individual. There are those who do not want to accept 
this theory, but let me say again, America, wake up. We're living in a time where you no longer have the right to speak your mind and speak out. Did you know that just last year, the United States Supreme Court passed a law that said that whistleblowing was not, I repeat, was not protected under the First Amendment to the Constitution. So your rights are being severely limited. They will continue to be limited and people must come forward particularly if they're being targeted, and let someone know that they are part of our organization, which again is called Targeted Individuals. I would encourage everyone to visit a website called Stop Covert War and learn about the number of people who are targeted by our government. We want our numbers to grow, not because you're a target. We want you to join our organization so that we will have a voice. As our numbers grow, so will our power. Again, Wake Up America, you could be next if you are in the wrong place at the wrong time. God bless. Oh, 
tell me who? Pasha. Dr. Lele Pasha? Mm. Hey? Mm. Hey, Lele Pasha. Lele Pasha? Mm. Lele Lele Cabecita? Mm. Lele Pasha. Lele Pasha, mi hijo? Mm. <laughs> Mucho? Pasha. Lele Pasha, mi hijo? Mm. Ah, bueno, papá. The pain. I feel my body exploding. Doesn't matter where I go, whether I'm standing up or laying down, it doesn't matter. I feel my body is floating. I'm very sick. This is a crime. I feel my breathing. And my heart inside my head. I got my head all full. Every time I cough, I sneeze, I feel on my I feel like my head is exploding. This happened because I sent emails to Michigan explaining the corruption of the Thomas and Cody Law School. That happened Monday. On Tuesday, the meter started showing 12 watts per square meter flashing. That is more than is required to cause physical harm. This is retaliation for being, for denouncing racial discrimination. The defendant in this case now This is the U.S. Attorney General, John Ashcroft. He would be the one for blaming for this murder. God bless us and God bless America. We will let these people alone. They're causing a lot of harm to innocent people like me. Just because they complain of racial discrimination. And because I complain about the former Chief Justice of the Michigan Supreme Court stealing money from us. His name is Thomas E. Brennan. And I hold him responsible for this. God bless him. the city council, the investigators, the chief of police, the captain who was denying any child prostitution was going on in the canyon even though I had it all on video. This does a lie. I have them on video refusing to act when these little girls who I interviewed the migrants in the canyon, they are 13 years old, sometimes younger, oh yeah, raping these little girls, these illegal alien sex slaves, but they just turn another cheek. You know what I have them on video? Threatening to arrest me? Question about some of the technology that you're developing to fight the war on terror, specifically directed energy and high-powered microwave technology. Do you, uh, when do you envision that you can weaponize that type of technology? Mm -hmm. Goodness, um, it is. It is in, for the most part, the kinds of things you're talking about are in varying early stages. Do you want to give anything you'd add? I don't think I would add much. I. Mm -hmm. I it's, it, 
I think they are in early stages and, and, and probably not ready uh, for employment at this point. But you sound like you're willing to experiment. With it. I, I think that's the point, and I think, and it's we, we have, I think, from the beginning of this conflict, I think General Franks has been very open to looking at uh, new things if there are new things available, and has been been willing to, to put them into the fight. Just ahead uh, was burned and. Uh, uh, other, the other parts of the, the bodies wasn't anything that happened on, on it. Al-Ghazali reported that he had seen three passengers in a car, all dead, with their faces and teeth burnt, the body intact, and no sign of projectiles. Uh, there wasn't any, any bullet. I saw they, they teeth, just their teeth, and um, no eyes, uh, all of them, with the body. Nothing for the bodies, just the teeth and, and uh, all the, uh, I mean, uh, the heads uh, were uh, burned. There were other inexplicable aspects. The terrain where the battle took place was dug up by the American military and replaced with other fresh earth. The bodies that were not hit by projectiles had shrunk to just slightly more than one meter in height. Uh, except that uh, the bodies is uh, scaled by the bu bullets. Most of them that uh, become very small. Uh, I mean, uh, it's like, like that, something like that. Talk with the colleague, Dr. Saad al which is the chief surgeon in that hospital. Dr. al said me, that from the survivors that he operated that they said they did not hear any noise so there was no explosion to hear no metal fragments or shrapnels or bullets in the bodies so they themselves were thinking of some strange kinds of weapon which they did not know no gunshot wounds. No, no. It, it, I think, I don't know what it was, really. We couldn't, we are here, ten uh, surgeons. We couldn't decide what was the weapon which been uh, hit this car. But inside the bodies, you did not discover ordinary bullets. All of them being, all, we didn't find bullets. Yeah. We didn't find bullets. But most of the uh, passenger people, been dead, so they took them immediately to the uh, refrigerator. We couldn't accept them to see, but those those who are alive, we couldn't find any kind of uh, shells. We didn't find shells inside their body. Outside, it seems to be a new, a new. It seems, it seems a new. Uh, they uh, try to accept what uh, was. Yes. So you do experiments on our civilians. We don't know what was. Uh, Nobody can identify what the time of this was. 26 in the past, about 20 of them, some of them have no head, the head being cut. Some of them, the arms, the legs, the only one who didn't injure was the driver. And really, I don't know how he reached our hospital, because one hand, one arm was in his lap, one head beside him. It was a very, very strange, horrible, horrible, horrible thing. In the roof of the car, there was part of the body, quantum intestine, brains. Yes, so parts of the body. It was a miserable, it was very, 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 very miserable. Before. Do you have idea with what kind of weapons they attacked that bus? This the bus. We didn't know what kind of uh, weapon would be uh, hit. Really, what, what we saw, cut arms, cut legs, cut head, abdomen, open abdomen. The temptation to use public power and play God is almost irresistible.